Kevin, how was your day at work? Did you finish everything you had to do? Yeah, it was a long day. I had to work overtime to finish a project. I'm feeling exhausted. I'm on my way home now. I just got on the train. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You must be really hungry. Do you want me to order something for dinner? Or maybe you can pick up something on your way home? Oh, again? Well, I don't mind ordering something once in a while, but we've been doing that a lot lately. Don't you think we should cook more often? I know, but I've been craving some smoothies from that Indian place by that big department store. They're so delicious and refreshing. Can we please have them tonight, just as a treat? I'm sorry, but I can't do that. That place is too far from where I am right now. I'm already on the train heading home. It would take me too long to go back and get them. Can we please have something else tonight? Maybe we can have those smoothies another day. Oh, come on. It's not that far. You can just get off the train and go back for a few minutes. It won't take that long. Please, can you do this for me? It would make me really happy. Look, I understand that you want those smoothies, but I'm really tired right now. You know I had to work late tonight. Can you please be more considerate of how I feel? And speaking of which, Taylor. What are you going to say now? What else are you unhappy with? You were the one who wanted to stay at home and be a housewife instead of working outside. So why don't you take some responsibility for making dinner? I don't mind ordering out occasionally, but you haven't cooked us a single meal since we got married. That's not fair to me. How can you say that? Being a housewife is not easy. I have a lot of things to do every day. I don't have time to make dinner. You should appreciate what I do for you. That sounds like an excuse to me. What exactly are you so busy with? What do you do all day at home? How dare you question me like that? Are you implying that I'm not a good housewife? That I'm not fulfilling my role in this marriage? Honestly, that's what it looks like to me. You don't seem to care about our home or our relationship. What are you talking about? Give me some examples of what I'm doing wrong. Not making dinner is just one of the many things that bother me about your behavior. You don't even make breakfast for yourself, let alone for me. I have to do it every morning before I go to work. And when I come back, I see that the laundry is still piled up, the floor is still dirty, and the bathroom is still filthy. You never clean anything around here. I have to do it all by myself. And don't tell me that being a housewife is hard or that you have a lot of things to do because I don't see any evidence of that. What exactly are you spending your time on? Huh? How can you be so busy that you can't even cook a simple meal or do some basic chores? That makes no sense to me. And on top of that, you're expecting me to get you a puppy next month from your friend who's giving them away? You know how much I love dogs, but I only agreed to let you have one if you promise to clean up more around the house and take care of it properly. But nothing has changed since then. You still don't clean up after yourself, let alone after a dog. And I'm the one who's been preparing everything for the puppy's arrival, like buying food, toys, and a bed for it. So what's your problem? You said yourself that you like dogs too. Why are you making such a big deal out of it? It's not like it's my only responsibility to look after it. You're missing the point. The puppy was your idea. You're the one who begged me to get it for you. You're the one who's going to have to take care of it during the day and clean up its messes. I'm worried about how you're going to handle that. You don't even clean up after yourself now. How are you going to cope when we get a puppy that doesn't know how to use the bathroom yet? You're always finding something to complain about, aren't you? Don't you know that it's the husband's duty to take care of his wife and make her happy? If you want to be a good husband, maybe you should start showing some empathy and compassion for me and give me a break from your nagging. I've been giving you plenty of breaks. I just explained to you how I've been doing most of the housework by myself. You've always got to come back, don't you? If you want to keep treating me like this, 
I'll have no choice but to divorce you. Not this again. Why do you always threaten me with divorce whenever we have a minor argument? Is that your solution for everything? Because you keep disrespecting me and my choices because I'm a housewife. I'm not disrespecting you or your choices. I'm just asking you, as a housewife and as my partner, to do a little more of your share of the housework. Stop being so unreasonable. I'm serious. If you don't drop this subject right now, I'll divorce you. Do you hear me? Divorce. Oh, how am I supposed to deal with you? Look, I'm done talking to you. Unless you want me to file for divorce tomorrow, I suggest you turn around and go back and get me some of those samosas I'm craving. That's impossible. By the time I got all the way back there, they would be closed. They stopped taking orders at 10 p.m. What? Are you kidding me? Fine. That settles it. It's divorce. Oh. My. God. Can you please calm down for a second? You're really going to end our marriage over some samosas? Don't you think that's a bit extreme and childish? This is all your fault. You're the one who's ruining our relationship. Come on, be reasonable. I'm going out to eat somewhere else. What, at this hour? I told you, I have a strong desire for some mooses. If you can't get me the ones I adore from that restaurant, I'll just have to find another one nearby that serves them. Do you have any idea what time it is? My friend told me about an Indian restaurant that stays open until 2 a.m. I'm going to call her right now. I'm going to go out for dinner with her, and then we're going to have some drinks. You can get your own dinner. Wait, hold on. If you don't want me to divorce you, you'd better reflect on your actions tonight and come up with an appropriate apology. I don't even know what that means. Taylor, what is this supposed to mean? I came home and found these divorce papers lying on the table. Have you lost your mind? You already filled them out and signed them without even talking to me? How could you do something like this? What do you want from me now? I just got my delicious samosas delivered and I was about to savor them. But then you started bombarding me with messages and calls on my phone and you ruined my appetite. Can't you leave me alone for a moment? I'm asking you to explain yourself. What the heck are you trying to do with these divorce papers? Are you serious about this? Oh, those, huh? You finally noticed them, did you? Well, I wanted you to wake up and realize how poorly you've been treating me lately. How I've been treating you? What are you talking about? You're supposed to be my husband, but lately you've just been nagging me about everything. And every time I tell you that I'll divorce you if you don't change, you just laugh it off or ignore me. I wanted you to see that I'm not joking around when I say that I want a divorce. So that's why you went behind my back and filled out divorce papers without telling me. Yeah, I got them a while ago. That way I'd have them if I ever felt the urge to do it. You always acted like I was bluffing, so I figured I needed to show you some proof that I wasn't. This is unbelievable. So there you have it. Now you know the truth. But since I'm feeling generous, I'll give you one night to think about all this and what it means for us. If you want to apologize and beg for my forgiveness, then sometime tomorrow, I'll expect you to send me a decent written apology via text message. It better be sincere and heartfelt. You've got until tomorrow night to write me one, or else. I don't understand what I did wrong that made you so angry and unhappy. Please, come home tonight and talk to me. That's why you'd better rack your brain and figure it out. That's what reflecting means? Don't expect me to come home tonight. I'm staying with a friend who actually cares about me. Use tonight to think about how badly you've treated me and how sorry you are for it. If you can't come up with a good apology, it's over between us. I couldn't enjoy the samosas because of your constant interruptions. You owe me another order of them. Hey, wait a minute. Goodbye. Don't bother me again. 
I hope you had a restless night. Did you think about what you did to me? Did you toss and turn in your bed because you were tormented by the thought of losing me? Uh, no. I slept like a log. Like I usually do. I had nothing to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Act like you weren't concerned about me, but me divorcing you is looming over the horizon. Whatever you say. Yeah, well, I'm feeling much happier now than last night, thanks to my friend who supported me and comforted me. Actually, we've decided to have some fun and take a little vacation. We're leaving this afternoon and we're going to enjoy ourselves for three days. I'm on my way back home to pack a bag and get ready for the trip. Don't get any ideas that this means I forgave you or that I want to see you. Either way, it doesn't matter to me. I'm on my way to work now, so I won't be there when you get home. Oh, I guess not. <laughs> Bye. Have a nice trip. Don't mess up at work because you were distracted by the thought of me and how much you miss me. Kevin, where is your apology message? It's almost midnight. You're running out of time. <laughs> You're being very annoying. Excuse me? How dare you talk to me like that after everything that happened? If you don't apologize right now, I'm divorcing you for good. Divorce! You didn't forget my ultimatum, did you? I made it crystal clear. Yeah, yeah. The written apology that you demanded from me. Oh. Did you come up with a good one? More or less. Good. Let's have it. Well... I spent some time reflecting on what you said and what happened between us. I thought about it for a very long time, actually. I assumed you would. And just as I expected, I was right, wasn't I? Well, I decided this was a good opportunity to end this drama once and for all. So, I signed the divorce papers that you left on the table and handed them in. What? You submitted them? Where did you do that? What do you mean? There's only one place where you can file them. On my way home from work today, I stopped by City Hall and handed them in. What? How could you do that? You filed them? You filed them without telling me? If you did that, it means our marriage is over for real. Yeah, that's right. Just like you wanted. I thought about it and I couldn't find any fault in myself so I figured I'd grant you the divorce you asked for. Wait a minute. What? Divorce? Divorce me? Are you serious? That means we won't be married anymore. That's what you've been saying all along, isn't it? Huh? You wanted me to think hard and regret what I did, but I didn't. I still don't think I did anything to deserve your anger and resentment. So, I figured, maybe we're not compatible anymore. You said you wanted a divorce, and after thinking about it, I agreed with you. So, we're getting a divorce. What's the issue? Hold on. Don't say that. I married you because you convinced me that you loved me more than anything. We're supposed to be soulmates. You still love me, don't you? Uh, how do I say this? I realized maybe I made a mistake when I chose you as my wife. What did you just say? Because of this divorce, I'm going to be more cautious and selective when I choose my next wife and not jump into anything too hastily. That's not what I wanted you to realize and learn from this. But you were the one who initiated the divorce, right? No, I didn't! That was just a bluff! Well, too bad. It's too late now. The divorce papers are already filed. It doesn't matter! There must be a way to undo this. I'm coming home as soon as possible. We'll sort this out then. We are not getting divorced. Hey, I just got back. But why aren't any of your things here? Your clothes, the bed... Hold on. The bookshelf, too? Oh, you're back. What do you mean, oh, you're back? 
I told you I was coming home first thing so we could talk. Why aren't you here? Your wife has come home to discuss things with you, like she said she would. You should have had the decency to wait for me. My wife? No, we're not married anymore. I told you, I'm not accepting that we're divorced. You were the one that went and got the papers and filled them all out, weren't you? All I did was sign the papers in agreement and hand them into City Hall. I told you, I'm not accepting that. So we're still husband and wife. Whether you accept it or not, the government does. <laughs> And, I told you, you were the one that prepared all the papers. Do you not see this problem is all in your head? We're not connecting as husband and wife like we should be right now. So then maybe it's a good thing I submitted the papers. Huh? I agree. We're not connecting. I can't do this anymore. And you can't accept what I found out after reflecting on everything. It seems pretty obvious to me that we've drifted apart. That's not true. It's not like that. Anyway, I'm canceling the rental agreement on the apartment next month. Huh? If you want to keep living there, you'll have to make a new rental agreement in your name. And obviously, you'll have to pay the rent yourself. Hold on a second here. I don't have a job. I'm a housewife. I don't have any money to pay for this. Well, get a job or leave the apartment and move back in with your parents. Oh, and I've already told your parents we've gotten divorced. What? You told them? I figured I should speak to them one last time, seeing as I had married their daughter. What's wrong with you? Pretty much everything on my end is finished. I've already moved out, so I'll leave everything else up to you. Oh, and one more thing. Your parents said they'd take that puppy that was supposed to be coming to our apartment next month. Kevin, wait! Kevin, what the heck is this? This thing came by certified mail? What's this about? Oh, you got it. What is this thing? A demand for compensation money? Uh, you opened it and read it, didn't you? I read it. But why am I being charged extra in this divorce? Compensation for what? If you read it, you should understand it. You're getting charged because you were cheating on me. What, is this like suing? You're suing your own wife for cheating? You know I don't work. It's horrible of you to sue me for money. What are you talking about? You deserve to pay. You were cheating on me. You broke our vows. But I don't bring in any money. I'm not working. I'm a housewife. Nope. We're already divorced. You're single now. That means you're not a housewife. Yeah, that. We are already divorced. Our divorce has been finalized, so it's too late. You would have had to do this before the divorce was finalized, right? Trying to bill me for something that happened during the marriage. It's too late, right? You're wrong about that. Even if we're divorced, if it was found out within three years of the divorce that one person was cheating during the marriage, a claim for compensation money can still be filed. What? Shall I continue? I know who you were cheating with, too. It's that college student that lived in the apartment across from us. What? How did you... When I was preparing for the puppy to come, I set up a pet camera in the living room. I was testing it. A camera? You know, I find it funny that we're this far into the conversation. You've never once tried to deny that you were cheating. But anyway, the camera shows you and him clearly doing it right there in the living room. You recorded me without my permission? You're terrible! All without your permission? We talked about getting the pet camera, and after I installed it, I told you I was going to test it. Huh? Yeah, 
It's in our chat history if you just scroll up far enough. You must have been too caught up in the moment to remember about the camera when your boyfriend showed up, huh? You're lying. This is after I saw it. I hired a private detective to see what else you were up to. You know, because you were too busy as a housewife to do anything around the house. A private detective? I sent a claim for compensation money to that college kid, too. I sent it to him at about the same time as I sent yours. So he should be getting his any time now. Oh, then that means... No, hold on. He's living with his fiance. If he gets found out, it will cause huge problems for him, too. How could you? I should be saying that to you. You cheated on me. Oh, whatever. I don't care. I'm glad I divorced you. I've thought about it, and I don't care. You'll pay this bill for me as well as his own. Oh, really? He's already got a good job lined up for when he graduates. He's going to be a high-ranked manager in the future. He's already signed a contract. If I can marry him... Well, the first year will be tough because of you. The money we have to pay you. But I can still be a housewife and not work. Oh, really? You made okay money. But in the future, he's going to make so much more than you ever could. Oh, is that so? Huh? <laughs> you thought you screwed me, didn't you? But I'm still going to come out on top here. Really? Unfortunately, that job was only offered to him through connections. Huh? What does that mean? Your little college boyfriend there? That job was offered because of who he's engaged to. If he marries his current fiance, his future will look pretty good. But once she finds out about him cheating on her with you, I doubt he'll still get the job. What? But that's... He won't be working at that company. He's going to have to start looking for a job all over again. And this time, he won't have any connections to help him out. You're lying? That's what the detective told me. From now on, if you want to talk to me, do it through my lawyer. This is the last time I'll be contacting you directly. Hold on, I told you, I don't have any money. Get a job! But I want to be a housewife! You don't want to be a housewife? You want to be someone who stays at home and does no work of any kind. <clears throat> Kevin! After that, Taylor refused to move out of the apartment, so she called her parents for help. Her parents were so furious with her that they ordered her to come back and live at their house. Since Taylor had squandered all of her money, her parents had to pay me the compensation money themselves. They gave it to me in one lump sum. At least her parents had some decency and integrity. I also got the money from the college student who had helped her with the scam. Taylor thought she had gotten away with everything. So she brazenly told everyone, including her parents, that This was just a minor setback. Next time, I'm going to marry a rich man for sure. But her parents were appalled by her and her lack of remorse. So they cut her out of their will and disowned her. She had never finished college, so now she had no husband, no money, and no family. She decided to try an online dating site. I guess it worked to some extent because she moved from one man to another, living off anyone who would let her stay with them, but never finding anyone worthwhile. Apparently, while she was hopping from bed to bed, she got pregnant. I only found out about this because she sent me a message demanding me to pay child support but I knew it wasn't mine based on the timing of everything. I didn't even bother to reply to her. I just blocked her number and forgot about her. <laughs>